It's good to have an angle down because then it makes you look skinnier. Hey, what's up? It's HJ and I'm with my cousin. Hi, I'm Amber. She is a senior. Mm -hmm. And um, we were just kind of talking the other day, like cousins do, <laughs> and we are just talking about like some difficulties that happen in high school amongst teenagers, and it's just like, how do I navigate them as a Christian? Dumb stuff, crazy um, stuff, weird yes. stuff happens. <laughs> so we're just going to talk about some of the key, key um, struggles that a teenager goes through. Mm -hmm. And also I'm sick, so don't mind that. <laughs> Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, now I gotta get back in the- I was in the zone! I gotta get back in the zone. So, one of the first things that you wanted to talk about, we have a list. We have a list yes. of high school struggles. Okay, what's one of the most important ones to you and you think that we should talk about? Okay, first one is school friends versus church friends. So, like, is- you know that you see your school friends, obviously, five times a day. Five times a day. <laughs> five days a week. <laughs> With school friends, you see them five times a week, and then with church friends, you probably see them like once or twice a week, mm -hmm. so there's obviously a big difference in like times that you see them and how often you see them, so is one really better than the other when you like hang out with them? Because obviously, you're going to see your school friends a lot more often than your yeah. church friends, so it might be like a connection or whatever, yeah. so is one really better than the other? Right. So I think just in general, we have to look at like, what does the Bible say is important for a Christian to have as a friend? And the most important type of friend, not that we can't be friends with non-believers, because we can and we should, mm. um, but our deepest friends, the one we're like sharing our heart with, sharing our problems, asking for advice, it needs to be a Christian because what good is it? How does iron sharpen iron if only one of you is iron? You know what I mean? Like if that person that. is not a Christian, then they're not really gonna sh <laughs> they're not really gonna sharpen your life. They think in a worldly way, so they're feeding yeah. you worldly ways to think, worldly ways to live, and you're just being around somebody who isn't Christ-like, who doesn't have the Holy Spirit, who doesn't have conviction for sin all the time, and mm -hmm. that can chip away at you. Just biblically, Christians being around Christians is always going to be a better choice. Mm -hmm. But like you said, we're there five days a week, and it's really rare, probably in a public school, for a Christian to like find another Christian mm -hmm. friend, especially at the young age. Um, so you're going to be around non-believers. You're going to make friends with non-believers. You're going to have classes with them. So with that, I would say just be careful with how deep you go with them. But it's a really great opportunity to befriend them every day, and you show them in the differences, like how you talk versus how they talk, mm -hmm. the things you desire versus the things they desire, how you have joy and peace, and like whenever trials come and you let them see you going through them, and it's like, I wouldn't have reacted that way. You're not reacting oh, with yeah. the anger. You're not reacting, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then if anything, like you're just being a witness of Christ and possibly, hopefully, prayerfully, they're going to see that and they'll be like, dang, maybe there really is something to this Christianity. Yeah. So you're using it as an opportunity really to just like show Christ to a non-believer and share yeah. with them. Yeah, because a lot sure. of the times when I hang out with like my friends, they kind of, they're usually asking me for advice and stuff mm -hmm. because I don't usually ask them for advice because I know that they're going to give me like the worldly perception and that's not what you need. Mm -hmm. And so, you know... Like, they're usually asking me for advice, so I kind of tell them, like, what I would do, put myself in their shoes and stuff like that, and kind of, like, try and use that as a way to, you know, help them out and probably, like, try and lead them to Christ a little bit. That's good. So that's, that's kind of what I try to do, but if I ever need something, like, I would probably rather go to a church friend or a family member. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't have good, like, church friends, um and you only have like non-believers at school, link up with like a family member that's a Christian and hang out with them and gain wisdom. <laughs> um, or just like find friends at church. There's no excuse to like not try to build relationships and put your foot out there. And sometimes you may get hurt or you may get disappointed, but Christ tells us to like wear body and to be unified, especially if you go to the same church with that person, like not mm -hmm. being their friend is not an option. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay. okay. What was the second part? Um, the second part was um, your school friends and your church friends, like mixing them together, um, like having them in the same 
situation, I guess. Like at my birthday party mm -hmm. at Rollerama. Mm. <laughs> I was skating the night away. So was I. <laughs> so, like, I had my church friends and my school friends all together. And it was kind of weird because some of them would be like talking about like depression and anxiety. And I was like, why don't we change the subject? Because I've got my church friends here and everything. So it was a little bit weird. Yeah. And I did not know what to do in that situation. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I think it's actually a really good opportunity to mix your church friends and your school friends. Maybe, like, your church friends wouldn't go... I mean, sorry, no. Your church friends would go to church. Maybe... <laughs> <laughs> I hope, hopefully. Maybe your school friends wouldn't go to church. Like, if you've invited them, they're, like, really not that into it. But just getting to be around a bunch of believers in one setting and maybe just seeing, like, the Christ-likeness might warm them up to that. But also... That nervousness of like, oh, oh no, don't say that in front of my church friends. Like, that doesn't need to be there because... Oh, it's always how you're, It doesn't need to be there because it's like your church friends, how they treat them should be Christ-like. But if mm -hmm. anything, don't be nervous to make one person might say or anything. Mm -hmm. Like, the tension's good. Like, maybe um, the non-believer says something that the believer gets to answer and it's Christ-like. And they're like, oh. oh, I've never thought of it like that before. Or maybe the um, non-believer asks a question that the believer, being young and you know, every, uh -huh. new in their faith and stuff, it's like, oh, I've never been asked that before. So it mm -hmm. challenges them. It's like, oh, it yeah. gives it a space for each person to be challenged in Christ in their own way. That makes sense. And for the non-believer, for the believer to have a space to like, show them Christ and you not be the only Christian that they see, you know what I mean? Oh, for there yeah. to be more. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's good to make a space where Believers and non-believers can come together and, like, you know, do yeah, it. It's good. Yeah. This is good, because, like, I've never thought about this before <laughs> either. <laughs> yeah, it's good. we got to throw a party. Everybody's coming. Take 3,000. <laughs> Reputation. Okay, so the third part to that, it kind of goes with the friendships you wanted to talk about. Reputation, so kind of, you know, how a lot of the times people will kind of just see Christianity as a whole and they'll kind of judge it. They'll be like, oh, so you're Christian, so that means you, like, hate gay people or you, like, judgmental. Like, you think, just because, yeah. Like, yeah, they'll just, like, kind of, like, cut to conclusions about it. Mm -hmm. And you don't, you don't want the way that people see it, like, badly to reflect on how they see you as a person. Okay. Like you're, yeah. you know. Yeah, that makes sense. So like, that's even outside of high school. People have ruined Christianity's reputation. Mm -hmm. And so it's really just up to how we treat people and how we love people and how we serve people to show like, that's not the kind of Christian I am. Pretty much any negative thing that anybody can say, you can use that as an open door to throw it open. Like, well, actually I just love you and I don't, what you're thinking about Christianity isn't true. Like, I love you. Mm -hmm. That's weird. Why do you love me? Because, like, Christ loved me when I didn't deserve it. And so I love people. I love, like, Christ's love. And then they're just like, that's weird. And then it's like another, it's like the, the rabbit hole of, like, then you get to talk about how Christ loved people. Then you get to yeah. talk about, you know what I mean? And so it's like any negative situation, we kind of want to run away from it. At first, we want to stray away from any, like, negative anything mm -hmm. but if somebody's talking to you about christianity whether it be from a good point of view or from a negative point it's such an opportunity and such an open door you just have to learn how to navigate what to say next to mm -hmm. point to christ and what to say to show them what you're believing is false like let me show you what the true mm -hmm. christianity is you know what i mean yeah so don't be afraid to be the christian girl if anything be afraid to be oh just the nice girl Okay. If you're just a nice girl or just the one, but nobody really identifies you or knows you as a Christian, then that's really an issue because mm -hmm. how unashamed are you being for the gospel? How unashamed of Christ's name are you being yeah. <laughs> if you're not known as a Christian? You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I would say be afraid to not have a Christian reputation. Yeah, that's true. Because <laughs> then it's like, why are you trying to hide? <laughs> why are you trying to hide from Jesus? <laughs> So yeah, yeah, don't hide it. Everything's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, it's good to find like open doors for everything to like try and pinpoint like how you can use this as an opportunity to like yeah. talk about Jesus and like point everything to Jesus. That's really good. Yeah. So sometimes we can feel like, well, I'm afraid to be known as the Christian person because what happens if I mess up? Yeah. 
What happens if I fail and I don't act like Christ and then I ruin everything? And it's really such an opportunity. Again, open door. If you fail somebody to go back to them and be like, you know what? I shouldn't have just yelled at you or mm -hmm. I shouldn't have ignored you. I shouldn't have treated you a certain way because that's not how Christ treats me. Yeah. And so like, will you forgive me? And I know Christ forgives me, but like, I really want you to forgive me and know that like, that's not what I'm about. But I do slip up and I do sin and that's why I need Jesus and just yeah. pointing it back to Christ because a lot of people are like, Christians just get saved and they think they never sin or they never do sin or whatever, but it's like, mm -mm. nope. <laughs> I will fail you. <laughs> so just using your failures as opportunity again to point to Christ. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's no fear in having a Christian reputation as long as you're pointing to Jesus. Yeah, that's good. These are good. We need more of these. Yes, thumbs up if you think that we should do more of these vlogs. Um, thumbs up if you like this, if this helped you, if you felt the situation, if you felt the str if you feel the struggle and yes. you know and you want some help. Actually, if you guys have any other struggles that you deal with as a teenager in high school, and you wanna put that in the comment below, we can probably address that. Yeah, I'll be looking to, and I'll be like, I relate. Yeah, if you can relate, thumbs up. <laughs> Don't forget to share. Um, that is Everywhere. the number one way that a channel grows, is actually through the watchers, the subscribers, you subscribe, share with everybody so more mm -hmm. people can see it, and yeah. Yeah, do it. This is good, I enjoyed this. I did too. <laughs> Let's do more. Let's do more. We're going to do more. Okay. Love you guys. See you soon. Yeah.